بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قال سبحان کا لائل مولانا اللہ ما علم تانا انا کامت العلیم الحکیم ویل بی اسٹارٹنگ دس ٹوینٹی ایتھ لیکچر آف دا سیریز دیٹ از سڈیشن اینڈ پیرالس از ان انٹینسو کیئر یونٹ سو فار نائنٹین لیکچرز ہیز بین ٹیکن آن دا بیس آف انٹینسو تھیراپی اینڈ دوز آر ناٹ A theoretical lecture, those are the things, the way we do it in our intensive care unit, the way I have been practicing for the last 50 years. So if anybody has got any question on it, I'm open all the time, 24 hours a day, and they can get their concept clear. And if they got any objection to this way of treating those problems, then they can discuss also. All those lectures are physiology-based. and I've got the reason to practice it. Now this sedation and paralysis is very important in a critical care unit, particularly in intensive care unit, in PICU and NICU. Everywhere sedation is very important. Now some people have divided, Royal College of Surgeons has defined this conscious sedation. Sedation is a technique in which the use of drug or drugs produces a state of depression of central nervous system enabling the treatment to be carried out but during which communication is maintained such that the patient will respond to command throughout the period. That is the definition of conscious sedation. But the Americans always do in a different way. But they do the same thing but in a different way. The Americans say a controlled state of pharmacological depression of consciousness that maintains protective reflexes, retains a patent airway independently and continuously and permits appropriate responses to physical stimulation or verbal command. It is the same thing but it is more physiological definition as compared to Royal College of Surgeons. Now if you look at the, the way the sedation goes, first is a conscious sedation. Then if you make this sedation a little bit deeper, it becomes light anesthesia. Then it becomes more deeper, then it becomes deep anesthesia. In conscious sedation, we look at the patient's verbal communication and cooperation is maintained throughout. That is the level of sedation we want in intensive case unit. In light anesthesia, verbal command and purposeful movements are lost, but reflex and spontaneous movements are maintained. Then if you take the person further deeper, that's called deep anesthesia, verbal commitments, verbal communications and cooperation are lost. But by definition, if you say what is anesthesia? It is, uh, anesthesia is the state of the patient where the patient can feel nothing. So it's a state of being unable to feel nothing is called anesthesia. You can create this state while the patient is awake. You can create this state when the patient is put to sleep. So that is local anesthesia and general anesthesia. So to actually and to combine this, so it is a state at which the patient doesn't feel anything. Right? Now, classification of grades of sedation. There are so many classifications has come, we will discuss at the end of lecture, but there are six grades they are made. One is if the first grade is unsedated or aroused, that is anxious patient. That is the first grade. Second grade is anxiolysis, in which the patient is awake but not anxious. Then third is sedation, sedated speech is slurred. And the fourth grade is eyes are closed and sleep but rousable. Right. Now then goes into a little bit into the anesthetic anesthesia. Here the fifth grade is the patient closes the eyes and there is a loss of verbal communication. The last when the patient becomes unresponsive and immobile and if the patient doesn't feed anything that goes into deep anesthesia. So this is, this is the way and these grades we choose at what grade the patient we have to take the patient to. It doesn't mean that we, we take the patient to sixth, 
sedation or all the patient to grade 5 no so we uh, depending on the patient so we choose our grade at which grade we have to keep the patient sedated there are two factors in the improvement of sedation in ICU one is there is increase in knowledge of agents there are so many agents there when we started anesthesia that time there was very little choice and very few techniques to uh, give a sedation to the patient but increase of knowledge of agent and increase of knowledge of techniques has improvised the sedation to the patient now why sedation why we want to give sedation to the patient now there are few things which we consider then we decide this patient needs sedation because history goes back if i look at uh, why when i was under training so it goes back one of my professor uh, professor robinson he was on ventilator when i joined that hospital actually i particularly went to that hospital queen elizabeth hospital in birmingham to have better training over there so i took up the post of registrar but he was on ventilator and every night when i used to be on call i used to sit by him and used to tell him the mr robinson you have to come back i have come to learn from you and you are lying here on the ventilator every night i used to say after 6 weeks they said no his brain is dead we should take him off the ventilator but his assistant peter tomlin he said no i will keep him on ventilator he was kept for another 6 weeks on ventilator then he came around then he came around and he was more sharp than before and he was saying to the uh, our group of junior that there are two things which were bothering me first thing is uh, somebody was saying in my ear that you have to come back when i told him that it was me he became a very good friend of mine and he taught me a lot and other thing he said when the door was closed i see doors it was so noisy that it was very painful for me then he wrote a book on sedation in icu and he was one of the pioneers of intensive care units in europe he has invented one ventilator also then he wrote quite a few books also and one of the sedation in icu now why we need the sedation is the patients are some of the patients are in pain we want to reduce the pain and patient who are awake they are having a fear of the unknown and they are anxious also with thinking about what is going to happen with us that's also one of the reasons we sedate them then if the patient is on ventilator it's very disturbing it's not a simple thing you put the tube down and put a ventilator to tolerate the ventilator is a painful thing and it is disturbing the patient also then various catheters and tubes you got a urinary catheter you got ng tubes you have different catheter going into central lines and arterial lines and other things also so those are also bothering the patient then disturbance of monitoring and procedures as your monitor is on you are giving alarm and sometimes you are doing some procedure also so so one thing is they should be sedated and second thing is whenever you address the patient whenever you want to do something with the patient even if you want to touch the patient always explain to the patient even if the patient is deeply sedated even if the patient is paralyzed even if the patient is getting hypnotic agent you must talk to the patient you say sir i'm going to do this and it's better you call by the first name you should know the name of your patient and always it doesn't apply only in the icu it applies to the patients who are in the ward also talk to the patient even if the patient is uh, very much deeply sedated or in coma talk to them because hearing is the last thing to go it's very important because if he hears then he'll feel better that there is somebody who is going to look after me always talk to the patient and talk by name right so because these patients are undergoing physiotherapy so that's also painful and disturbing then you are doing repeatedly suction and change of posture and if you are changing the dressing and putting on the dressing these are all disturbing that's why we need some sedation in icu so these in other words these are become the indication to put the patient on sedative agent 
Now, what is the choice? There are two groups of choices. One is non-drug maneuvers and other is drug therapy. Non-drug maneuvers are more important than the drug therapy. Everybody can do the drug therapy. Non-drug maneuver, may first thing is a reassurance. You reassure the patient and their patient is relatives in detail. Tell the patient, we are going to do this and this and take the patient into the confidence. And you will, you will not believe it, 33% of your pain goes away when you reassure the patient. Okay? Then adequately fed, their nutrition should be adequate. If the patient is underfed or overfed, the patient will feel disturbed. Then patient should be in fluid balance, electrolyte balance and acid based balance. And then last of all, the patient should be on nutritional balance. So you will have to consider the, these are the contributory things to the uh, disturbance of the patient. Now patient should be kept warm and comfortable. Then if the patient is on ventilation, the ventilation mode should be such which should be adaptable to the patient also. Right. So, and whenever you change anything, you move the ventilator, you move the dressing, or you change the tube, so you should deeply sedate the patient. Right. Then physiotherapy, and physiotherapy very big, should be very kind and should be very gentle doing the physiotherapy. And rapid eye movement sleep. So there are two types of sleep, REM and REM. So, so patient should be kept all the time in the REM sleep. Then diurnal rhythm. They should know day and night and what time it is now and the body also works according to diurnal rhythm also. So that shows what should be the designing of ICU. And designing of ICU should be in a such way that it should have a lot of lights into it, natural light and there should be a lot of windows and a lot of glasses also that they should be able to see it, those patients. It doesn't, ICU patient doesn't mean that the patient is uh, unconscious. The patient can be conscious, still have indication to be kept in the ICU. In drug therapy, you've got a group of analgesics, you've got a group of tranquilizers, you've got a group of anesthetic agents, then you've got some other additional agents also which can be used addition to the, as an addition to the sedative agent. Now, analgesic. Now, opiates are the first line. Because the opiates, we should know the facts, they, they can cause euphoria and they can cause the drowsiness also. And if you, do, if you use in a low dose, they could be sedative agent. And if you give in a high dose, they can depress the ventilation also. And these three things should be in your mind when you start opiates. Out of opiates, there are some disadvantages of opiates. They, all the opiates, without any exception, they cause sickness. It depends that how much is the sickness. Then they cause ventilate depression also if you are not using proper dose. They also decrease the heart rate. So because of decrease in heart rate, they can go into hypertension also. Even otherwise, they can into hyper, uh, uh, hypertension because opioids, they are vasodilators also, directly and indirectly also, indirectly by release of histamine. Then they can cause bronchospasm also. Right. Now, they are immunosuppressants, and if they're using these uh, opioids for longer period, they can cause tolerance and habituation. And this is not a simple thing because I have seen that even doctors are become um, addicted to these patients. We, we used to have a medical officer who they used to put tramol injection. No, don't they feel they the injection? So this is the way they are doing it. Tramol is the injection. One of my uh, registrar in, in uh, Nishtar, he was doing a diploma. So I was telling yesterday that he was addicted to obesity. And he died in the bathroom in the bathroom in Sheikh Zayed Hospital. Very good, brilliant doctor actually, he was a very good doctor. Mm. So, liver failure, there will be a prolonged effect of hypnotics, these uh, opiates, and in renal failure, toxic metabolites will not be excreted, and they can add to toxicity of the opiate itself. Now, opiates, according to the site of action, they could be centrally acting, 
they could be regionally acting, they could be locally acting. Then opiates can be naturally occurring, could be sympathetic, semi-sympathetic, could be, sorry, semi-synthetic and could be synthetic. Then opiate activity, according to activity of the receptor, they can be agonist, they can be antagonist, they can be mixed, agonist and antagonist. These are separate topics, that's why I have just enumerated it, that they have got different group of drugs. Now, mu agonists are commonly used, morphine. Morphine is the best drug as a painkiller up till now in the whole world. This is the first choice of drug. Dunia ki kitni bhi achhe painkiller they are the best. And morphine is then diamorphine. In UK, diamorphine is available in the hospital, not in the market. The diamorphine here is available in the market, not in the hospital. Heroin, diamorphine, wo hai. Then pepperidum, nowadays nobody uses it, and then pethidine. Pethidine is a beautiful drug, you say. Pethidine has got morphine-like action, pethidine has got atropine-like action, pethidine has got quinidine-like action. So that's why it can be used in, uh, if the pain is due to uh, cholecystitis and other pethidine can be because it is anticholinergic effect, it opens up the sphincter of odi. So it does not cause a constriction of sphincter of odi. So it has got quinidine like action because it stabilizes the myocardium rhythm. And morphine like action because it has got analgesic properties and sedative properties also. Now synthetic, you got fentanyl, alfentanyl, sufentanyl, remifentanyl and phenoparidine. If you look at the uh, pethidine, morphine is doubly stronger than the pethidine. Now fentanyl is 10 times more potent than morphine and alfentanyl 10 times more potent than fentanyl. Then fentanyl is equal to sufentanyl. Then remifentanyl is 10 times more potent than sufentanyl. Now this is the ten of, rule of 10. Fentanyl, alfentanyl, alfentanyl and sufentanyl, they have got equal analgesic property and they are equipotent. Then 10 times more potent is the remifentanyl, then you got phenoparidine also. So these are beautiful drugs because they have got very short half-life, so they can be used in a continuous infusion also. Now morphine, although it's not available here, it is a naturally occurring opioid agonist. Body may you produce morphine-like substances. Kya hoti hai wo? And caffeines and dorphines. So they are produced inside the body. If you are walking, if you are walking, you you are you don't feel any pain. Why don't you feel pain? Pain, because the nature is producing and caffeine and dorphine all the time. Their level is built up in the blood, so you don't feel anything. Now, if I give you the anti uh, anti morphine substances, so then their effect will be lost and you will start feeling pain. So that's the basis of acupuncture in the pain therapy. Because with acupuncture, we have got the points and we stimulate those points either with a needle or with a, with a hand. And they produce encephalines and endorphins. And it will reduce the pain you, have, you, are, you are suffering from. Now, this is very useful morphine when we're using, the, when the patient is on ventilator, it stimulates the Edinger Westfall nucleus and chemo receptor trigger zone, mean which causes sickness and vomiting. Interfere with the pontine and medullary centers also. And if sedative dose is bolus, you can give 0.1 to 0.2 milligram per kilogram body weight. And for infusion, you give 10 to 15 microgram per kilogram per hour. And if the patient is on controlled mechanical ventilation, so the dose is 2 to 4 milligram per hour. So this is a standard, laid down standard on the guidelines that it should be used this way. It's a beautiful drug, morphine. Probably uh, providers use it properly. Now it's uh, metabolized in the liver. So if there is a liver problem or liver disease, you'll be very careful to using it. Either you reduce the dose or you avoid it. Excrete it through the kidney also. 
Now, if the kidney is diseased, so then the level will build up. So, metabolites are morphine 6 glucuronide or morphine 3 glucuronide. So, if they are not treated to the kidney, they will have a morphine like effect also. Right? Pethidine. As I told you, pethidine has got t three type of action morphine like action, quinidine like action, and atropine like action. Now, it is and demethylation of to and norpethidine when it is uh, metabolized it becomes a norpethidine and it has got almost equal potency as that of pethidine now it is a cns stimulant brain ko stimulate karti hai bolus dose is 0.5 to 1 mg per kilogram infusion is 100 to 300 microgram per kilogram per hour so this should be in your guideline in the file and you always check fentanyl it is 10 times more potent than morphine and 5 times more potent than pethidine it is a synthetic derivative it depresses the ventilation highly lipid soluble half life is 3 to 4 hours and bolus we gave 0.25 milligram infusion is 9 to 10 microgram per kilogram per hour it's a beautiful drug provide you use on the right time and right place. Uh, during giving general anesthesia, if it is a major operation, we always used to give 100 microgram of fentanyl first and then we give other anesthetic agent. Now the patient is completely pain free and at the same time patient is sleeping because this propofol is not analgesic. So that adds to its hypnotic property and it will give beautiful analgesia also. And fentanyl is 10 times more potent than fentanyl. So, potency is one tenth of a fentanyl. It means uh, one tenth, potency is one tenth of fentanyl, but it is 10 times actually, it is wrongly written here. It is a protein bound, half life is 1.6 hour, so its half life is shorter. Metabolized in the liver, excreted through the liver. So, this is safer in the renal failure patient. Now, alfentanil can be safely used if the patient has got a renal failure. Dose is, bolus dose is 25 to 50 microgram per kilogram. Infusion is 0 0.3 to 2.5 microgram per kilogram per hour. So, fentanyl, similar to fentanyl, equal potency, strong analgesic, it's not very popular. Not being, but it's very popular now because it's a big, very expensive drug. It's a very short half life, but it's very expensive as compared to fentanyl or alfentanyl. Comparatively, up there, otherwise, I'll prefer to use fentanyl than to use fentanyl. Then you got tranquilizer group in me benzodiazepine, chloromethazone, nobody uses it now phenothiazines and butyrophenone group. So benzodiazepine, phenothiazine and butyrophenones are still being used. Now benzodiazepine market, in the market there are 43 types of benzodiazepines but commonly used are only 2-3. Now these benzodiazepines in general they can cause hypnosis, they cause amnesia. Amnesia means amnesia could be anti-grade retrograde uh, amnesia you forget the things this is a beautiful drug so if you got a bad incident preoperatively and paraoperatively they don't remember anything so this is this is a good thing so sometimes long memory coffee there tak chali jati hai wo achhi baat hai so this is amnesic it's a good property of these benzodiazepines so if you use for a longer period or if you use in a higher dose it causes uh, neuromuscular blockade also. So they are muscle relaxant also if you use in a high dose or if you're using prolonged and it accumulates in the body. It causes a non-depolarizing type of muscle relaxation. Now disadvantage variable dynamic and kinetics because it depends on the hemodynamics of the patient. Patient remains disoriented for longer time. Active metabolites if they are not excreted and, and we cannot get rid of rid of them from the body so their active metabolites becomes active, effective prolonged effect in the liver dysfunction 
So whenever the patient has got liver disease and we choose to give benzodiazepine, we should be very careful. Either we reduce the dose or we, have, we should use other alternatives. Examples commonly used is diazepam, midazolam, and lorazepam. Now, this diazepam is very long acting and midazolam is comparatively short acting. So, in old time, we used to use diazepam, now we are using midazolam. Now, effect of varying doses of sedation with the benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepine receptor occupancy. If it is a minimum, it is anxiolysis, it causes anxiolysis. It is anticonvulsant, sedative sad, agent, reduced, reduces the attention of the patient. It causes amnesia. It causes intense sedation if you are using a higher dose. It can cause a ptosis also. Then it causes a muscle relaxant depending upon how much you are using. And at the end it can cause hypnosis. And in maximum effect, the patient will be paralyzed and asleep. You decide how much should be given and how it should be given and for how long you want to give it. And when you are stopping it, you always remember it's a half-life. Half-life of the individual benzodiazepine, you should know it. And you should not affect it. If I stop a diazepam now, the patient should be awake. Its half-life is 40 to 52 hours. So it will remain in the body for that long time. Now, endpoints for sedation is traditional endpoints. Ptosis, dysarthria, drowsiness. I always look for these things when you put on the benzodiazepine. Mod modern endpoint is anxiolysis, amnesia and cooperation. That should be our objective. When we want to give sedation to the patient, that patient should not have any worry, patient should not remember anything, and the patient should be cooperative. You should talk to the patient and patient is cooperative and not worried. That's what we want. So, so it is not like a stop. So, they are non-cooperative, but they are not worried. So, this goes opposite to that, right? Now, diazepam, individual, half-life is 25 to 52 hours. Metabolites, half-life is 96 hours. Metabolites, they stay for longer time. So, dimethyl diazepam, desmethyl diazepam. It decreases the blood pressure in increased sympathetic activity. If the patient is anxious, the blood pressure is shooting up. When you give diazepam, so, so it will reduce the blood pressure because it will uh, take the anxiety away and the blood pressure start coming down. So, bolus dose is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 milligram per kilogram body weight and it has an interaction with in H2 receptor blocker. Always don't give the diazepam to the patient who are on H2 receptor blocker. Lorazepam, we hardly use it, but it's, I think, even orally. Lorazepam, uh, we have never seen an injectable form. Half-life is 11 to 22 hours. There's no active metabolites. Less respiratory depressant effect. Better anticonvulsant. Now, midazolam is commonly used. It is amida, amidazole benzodiazepine with fused amidazole ring. If you look at the structure, if you are interested in that, so that should be the uh, uh, chemical formula. It lowers the cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen utilization. So if you put this patient who, whose CMRO is raised or the patient who has got uh, um, uh, brain injury, if you put them on midazolam, it's a, it has got an advantage that it will lower the cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen utilization. Because it reduces the cerebral blood flow, it also reduces the cerebral perfusion pressure, it reduces the upper wear reflexes, it decreases the ventilatory response to carbon dioxide in COPD patient. So it means in COPD patient, you should be very careful also using these drugs. It reduces the systemic vasco resistance. So it will cause vasodilatation. And so if the blood pressure is raised because of sympathetic activity, due to anxiety. As it lowers the systemic vascular resistance, so it will reduce the stroke volume also. So it will, it can acutely drop the blood pressure also. Always keep in mind when you are giving intravenously this middle drug and give 
बिल्ड ऑफ द डोज ग्रेजुअली के वन मिलीग्राम देन टू मिलीग्राम थ्री मिलीग्राम ये नहीं पकड़ा ऐसे लगा दिया ऐसे नहीं करते इसको तो इट इट कैन टर्न आउट टू बी डेंजरस ड्रग ऑल्सो इट्स मेटाबलाइज इन दैपैटिक इन द लिवर बाई हैपैटिक हाइड्रोक्सीलेशन एंड कॉन्जुकेशन मेजर मेटाबलाइट ऑल हाइड्रोक्सी मिटाजोलॉम डोज इज पॉइंट जीरो फाइव टू पॉइंट वन मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम बॉडी वेट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गेट बोलस डोज इन्फ्यूजन इज जीरो पॉइंट वन टू वन मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम पर आवर एंड इफ यू आर गिवन वेरी हाई डोज यू वॉन्ट टू रिवर्स इज यो गॉड फिलोमज इन हिल इन्फ्यूजन ऑल्सो दिस इज अवेलेबल वी हैव कैप्ट इन आवर आई सी यू एमरजेंसी लाइंग फिलोमेजल वी हार्डली यूज इट बट बिकॉज वी यूज इट ऑन वेंटिलेटर पेशेंट एंड वी ग्रेजुअली रिड्यूस इट वी डोंट सी एनी टॉक्सिसिटी ऑफ मिटोज लॉन्ग नाउ ब्यूटारिफिनोन इज अनदर ग्रोप ऑफ ड्रग्स सो ब्यूटारिफिनोन एज गॉट हेलो पेरीडॉल ड्रो पेरीडॉल ट्रू ड्रग्स इन द हेलो पेरीडॉल वी आर यूजिंग नाउ इट इज क्वाइट लॉर्ड सरिनेज सरिनेज ही कहते हैं ना इसको हाँ जी सो इट इज एंटी डोपामिनर्जिक ड्रग is it anti cholinergic drug and it has got quinidine like effect it's a beautiful effects anti cholinergic it will reduce the heart rate anti dopaminergic it will increase the perfusion quinidine like action it will stabilize the myocardium and it is alpha blocker also it will cause vasodilatation also very good perfusion of the periphery it lowers the seizure threshold ye remember kare if you give any drug which stimulates the brain it will increase the seizures now it has it the only drawback is it cause extra pedometal type of syndrome in these patients one should be careful in losing who has got already extra pedometal type of symptomatology but it's a beautiful drug it's a drop by dal we used to uh, use it as a neuroleptic anesthesia neuroleptic anesthesia is we use to put the patient to sleep with the drop by dal so it's a beautiful drug along with the fentanyl now bitorifenone indication if the sedation in agitated patient if they are disorganized thinking and has got increased motor activity so hemodynamic if it is stable but keep an eye on hemodynamics and look at its metabolism and good nursing care is needed if the patient is put on bitorifenone हाँ उसके साथ साथ चले आप ये कॉन्सिक्वेंस हो सकती हैं इट कैन डिस्टर्ब द ह्यूमन डायनेमिक्स इट कैन कॉज द मेटाबॉलिक डिस्टर्बेंस एंड इट नीड्स वेरी मच अटेंशन बाय द नर्सेज बट इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल ड्रग कभी ले के देखें अनस्टेटिकेशन इंटरविनियस इटोमीडेट नो बट यूज इज नाउ इट इज एज अ डिवेलपमेंट स्टार्ट इंटरविनियस अनस्टेटिक एजेंट so we you i have used atomidet i have used althesin i have used barbiturate squatilol hey. and ketamine is still being used here england mein bahut kam propofol is commonly used as intravenous anesthetic agent so isme worth mentioning is a ketamine because it is a good drug but it's wrongly used and wrongly used by the wrong people if the surgeons have started using it now ketamine it is a sedative it is very strong analgesic and it is a bronchodilator also i used to use it as some in the in infusion form and but it causes hallucination sometimes the hallucination lasts for longer time and it is hypertensive also if the patient who has got already in hypotension who has got in hypotension it's the best drug to induce the patient put the patient to sleep because it not only increases the systolic blood pressure but it also increases the diastolic pressure it means it will increase the mean arterial pressure also it's a beautiful drug but if the patient is already hypertensive if you use this it will tremendously increase and cause brain hemorrhage also so you have to choose the indication what is the indication but it's a very strong analgesic so hum as a pain killer bhi dete rahe hain isko continuous infusion mein मैं एसो वाले पेशे में जब और कोई चीज़ें ट्राई की जब नई इफेक्ट होती कहते हैं यूज़ करें कैटामिन कैटामिन के इन्फ्यूजन चला देते थे तो इट्स अ गुड सैडिव एजन प्रोपोफॉल इज अ लाइपोफिलिक राइट इट इज़ अ रेपली मेटाबोलाइज इट आल्सो अफेक्ट्स द ब्लड प्रेशर इट लोअर्स द ब्लड प्रेशर ऑल द इंटरविजन एनसैटिक एजेंट्स दे लोअर द ब्लड प्रेशर एक्सेप्ट कैटामिन
ठीक है ये हमेशा याद रखें एक फिक्र ठीक है तो नाउ इट इज लाइपोविलिक रेपिडली मेट्रोलाइज वेरी शॉर्ट अरोजल टाइम इधर से बंद करेंगे थोड़ी देर में पेशेंट जाग जाएगा ठीक है इट ऑल्सो अफेक्ट्स द ब्लड प्रेशर इट इंक्रीज द ट्राई ग्लिसराइड्स एंड ओकेजनली इट कैन काज कन्वर्शन ऑल्सो ठीक ये कहां से बनता है कॉटन सीड ऑयल और सोयाबीन ऑयल्स कपास के बीजों से भी बनती जो अनस्थेटिक एजेंट एज एनस्थेटिक एजेंट बोलस रोजेज वन टू वन पॉइंट फाइव मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम एज इन्फ्यूजन वन टू थ्री मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम पर आवर ऑफ द पेशेंट इज मैकेनिकल वेंटिलेशन द डोज इज थ्री टू सिक्स मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम पर आवर हम बहुत ही कम डोज में इस्तेमाल करते हैं टू मिल पर आवर थ्री मिल पर आवर फाइव मिल आवर तो वो इन डोजों में फिट नहीं होती थोड़ी सी और ज्यादा करनी चाहिए हमें फॉर एनसीजिया बोलस इंडक्शन विद टू टू थ्री मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम इंटरवीजली विद कॉन्स्टेंट रेट फॉर मेंटेनेंस ऑफ फोर टू ट्वेल्व मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम पर आवर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गिव टोटल इंटरवीनस एनसीजिया क्या कहते हैं उसको टोटल इंटरवीनस एनसीजिया एक तो ये भी एक टेक्निक चली थी कि इनोलेशन एंड साइड के ना दें आप ठीक है तो आप ना ही आप नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड दें If you want to give oxygen and air and give intravenously and साथ muscle relaxant दे के आप पंप चला दें तो टोटल इंटरवीनस एन सी जी देते हैं तो सडेटिव डोज इज बोलस इंडक्शन डोज इज पॉइंट फाइव टू वन मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम बॉडी वेट एंड ड्यूरेशन इज वन टू फाइव मिनट्स में देते हैं आप ऐसा ऐसा बाकी तो सारी एनसीजिया के लिहाज से हैं तो रेजमिन फॉर एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ प्रोपो और टारगेटेड कंट्रोल्ड इन्फ्यूजन ना वेस्टर्न कंट्री में ऐसे पंप हैं जो आपको टारगेटेड ब्लड लेवल को मेनटेन करते हैं वो ऑटोमेटिकली एडजस्ट करते हैं डोज को कि डोज कितनी जाएगी तो हमने ब्लड लेवल टारगेट किया सडेशन के लिए वन टू टू पॉइंट फाइव माइक्रोग्राम पर मिल ये लेवल होना चाहिए प्रोपोहॉल का फॉर सडेशन तो एक दफा आपने स्टार्ट कर दिया तो ऑटोमेटिकली पंप जब ये लेवल बिल्टअप हो जाएगा स्लो हो जाएगा ये लेवल कम होगा फिर तेज हो जाएगा ऑटोमेटिकली करते हैं जब वो कहते हैं टारगेटेड कंट्रोल टीसीआई कहते हैं टारगेटेड कंट्रोल्ड इन्फ्यूजन अन सीधे के लिए थ्री टू एट माइक्रोग्राम पर मिल टारगेट होता है तो इसलिए टीसीआई इस्तेमाल करते हैं मैन यू गिव टोटल इंटरवेशन सीजिया जो टारगेट इज थ्री टू एट उसमें फीड कर देते हैं पंप में और उधर से उसकी इन्फ्यूजन चलाते हैं वो खुद खुद उसको करता रहता है प्रोवाइड ये ना हो कि पंप में खराबी होगी ये कुछ पेशेंट उठ के बैठा हो पैरालाइज उठने की कोशिश कर रहा हो ये उसी तरह हो जैसे मैंने एक दफ़ा ये ला के दिए इनको बेबी वार्मर नहीं बेबी वार्मर नहीं जो क्या होते हैं दूसरे इंक्यूबेटर्स पी डाडिस वालों को उन्होंने चलाया बच्चा अंदर पड़ा जब खोला तो बच्चा जैसे होता है ना चरगा रोज रोज हुआ था बच्चा उसका थर्मोस्टाइड खराब हुआ उसमें चलता गया चू हो गया तो ये चीज़ें जो ऑटोमेटिक होती हैं यू शुड बी वेरी केयरफुल अबाउट इट एंड गो ऑन चेकिंग अगेन एंड अगेन एंड अगेन ऑल दीज पम्प इन्फ्यूजन एंड सरिंज पम्प यू शुड बी चेकिंग दैम अदर इनिशन नाइट्रिक साइड नाइट्रिक साइड कैन बी यूज बिकॉज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग एनर्जीज इक ऑल्सो एंड इन द स्मॉल कंसनट्रेशन इट कैन कॉज सडेशन ऑल टू द पेशेंट जैसे आप लेबरों में इस्तेमाल करते हैं कर देते हैं इसको नट साइड को फॉर टू रिलीव द पेन ऑफ लेबर और यू कीप दम सडेशनेट ऑल्सो हेलो थिन ऑल्सो कैन यू बट इट्स इट्स नॉट ए गुड थिंग टू बी यूज नो वेट नो बडी यूज इट इट इज अटर टॉक्सिक ऑल्सो आइसोफ्लोरिन यू गट अ स्पेशल सीजिया मशीन स्मॉल मशीन इन द इंटेंसिव के यूनिट वेज यू कैन यूज आइसोफ्लोरिन फॉर सडेशन एवन फॉर सडेशन ऑफ द पेशेंट हु आर ऑन वेंटिलेटर तो चूंकि हमारे पास वो नहीं है अवेलेबल इसलिए हम नहीं सवाल बट बट रेयरली यूज बट देर इज ऑपरेट से स्मॉल मनसीजिया मशीन थ्रू विच यू कैन गिव नाट एंड आइसोफ्लेर ऑल्सो एंड वो उससे पेशेंट बड़ा अच्छा से डेट रहता है अदर एजेंट्स फॉर इंटरेस्ट इज एल्फा टू एगोनिस्ट कलोनिडीन कलोनिडीन इज अ ब्यूटिफुल एंजोलेटिक एजेंट इट इनिबिट्स एपीनेफरीन रिलीज ये पता है ना ना इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सिडेट द पेशेंट हु इज हाइपर टेंसिव यू वॉन्ट टू गिव कंटिन्यूस सडेशन 
this is a beautiful drug because clonidine is centrally acting or it will drop the blood pressure and at the same time it will keep the patient uh, pain free also it's a beautiful drug maine to ye spray logon ko paper lagwaye clonidine with the bupivacaine into the epidural space it prolongs the effect of bupivacaine now paralysis in icu what are the indication for paralyzing the patient in icu it facilitates invasive procedures and it will help in body position and airway it can secure the airway and you stabilize the airway also if you paralyze the patient and keep it sedated then ventilator discrony with the patient patient start want to move uh, to ventilate but we don't want the patient to ventilate himself so it should cooperate with the ventilator for that purpose we have to paralyze because we want to give rest to the lung and we want to have effective oxygenation and effective removal of carbon dioxide when then it decreases the oxygen consumption because the muscle activity will be reduced and it will require the it will reduce the requirement of the body for oxygen also and it decreases the carbon dioxide production because the muscle activity will increase the carbon dioxide production so when you paralyze the patient where the muscle will be flaccid and it will produce less carbon dioxide this coordinated uncomfortable mechanical ventilation for example you want to do very rare modes like irv inverse ratio ventilation ye patient ke liye comfortable nahi hota then high frequency ventilation if you want to induce permissive hypercapnia in ards or if you want to pressure release ventilation prv ye sari these are very uncomfortable for the patient it's better to paralyze them to have a good effective ventilation of the patient dynamic hyperinflation is one of the reason if the hyperinflation of the lung is there with without muscle relaxant you uh, relax the patient with the muscle relaxant and then you control accordingly in a tetanus patient in tetanus patient actually because they are rigid and they are convulsing it's better to paralyze them and then put them on a ventilator so that is the indication for inducing the paralysis status epileptic patient but don't forget if you give muscle relaxant to the status epileptic patient you will not see the manifestation of stimulation of central nervous system the brain muscle relaxant do not para- reduce the neuronal activity but it stops the manifestation of central neuronal activity aapko pata nahi chalega ki patient ko nerve shock ho rahi hai lekin uske sath bada strong aapko uh, sedative agent dena padega to depress the cerebral neuronal activity ko it's to as adjuvant therapy for decreasing the icp intracranial pressure agar patient ko paralyze karenge और हेड ऑफ कर दें दैन विट एन हॉन्स ऑफ इनस रिटर्न एंड देट विल ऑल्सो रिड्यूस द इंटरग्रेनियो प्रेशर एंड टू परमिट हाइपोथर्मियम बिकॉज इन हाइपोथर्मियम वन ऑफ द रिक्वायरमेंट्स इज दैट यू शुड हैव ए विजुअलाइटेशन एंड यू शुड हैव मसल रिलैक्सेशन सो दैन यू कैन इंड्यूस हाइपोथर्मियम इफ देर इज स्पेसिफिक इंडिकेशन फॉर हाइपोथर्मियम वैक्रोनियम इज वन ऑफ द मसल रिलैक्सन Atracurium is another muscle relaxant. So some people use vacuronium if it is for a prolonged effect. And if you use atracurium, the beauty of atracurium is its metabolism and excretion is not dependent on organs, on neither on liver nor on kidney, because they are degraded by Hoffman degradation, provided your pH is normal. तो उसकी एक रिक्वायरमेंट है पी एच ऑफ द ब्लड शुड बी नॉर्मल फॉर हैव द प्रॉपर डेग्रेडेशन ऑफ द एट्रेक्यूरियम एंड ग्रेजुअली दे डेवेल्स द टॉलरेंस मेटाबोलाइट्स दे कैन काज कन्वर्शन ऑल्सो बट आई हैव नेवर सीन इन माय होल लाइफ सो पीपल आर स्टार्टेड यूजिंग सिस एट्रेक्यूरियम उससे कम होते हैं कन्वर्शन के चांसेस नाउ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सी द पेशेंट एंड पैरालाइज द पेशेंट वॉट आर द आइडियल थिंग ideal drug to be used it should have a short elimination time uska jo duration of action once you stop it it should be very 
short. The metabolite should be inactive, non-dependent on the organs. It should have a wide therapeutic index and no interaction, no effect on CVS, no effect on respiratory system, no toxic to liver, kidney, renal and bone and marrow. It should be cheap, should be easily available. You won't find any single drug like this who fits into this criteria. लिखने में तो लिख देते हैं कि ये ये होना चाहिए लेकिन किसी ड्रग में कोई फायदा होगा किसी ड्रग में कोई फायदा होगा लेकिन यू हैव टू चूज द बेस्ट आउट ऑफ लॉट विच इज अवेलेबल टू यू